What's up everyone, this is Gamamori. In today's video, we're gonna compare and take a look at probably the two hottest mini Bluetooth speakers on the market today, the Bose Soundlink Mini and the Yui Boom from Logitech. Now both of these speakers sell for around the same price, which is about $200, and they both have excellent reviews written on them online. So if you go on any site that sells these speakers, you can see that they're rated nearly five stars. Now both of these speakers have a little bit different features and they have a different sound, but what we're going to do is today we're going to compare these features as well as the sound quality between the two of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to send some tones to it as well as some music and we'll see how they stand up to the challenge. The UE Boom is made out of plastic and it comes in many different colors. I picked up the black one instead of the other colors and the reason is that it has a rubbery silicone type finish to it and I found that the lighter colors scuff up and get dirty very easy because of this. I've seen the white one on display in the store and it was super dirty just from people touching it so for that reason I prefer the black one. When I power the UE Boom on, it makes that sound to let you know that the speaker is on and ready to go. Another feature with the audible feedback is that when I press both the volume up and down button simultaneously, it will announce the amount of charge left in the battery, just like this. 100% charge. The power button is part of the plastic body and therefore eliminating the possibility of water getting inside the speaker. The Bluetooth link button here uses the same concept as well. On the other side we have a D-ring that can be used to hang the speaker off from pretty much anything once you fold it out like this. You can also remove the ring and mount the speaker on a tripod if you prefer. Charging the speaker can be done by using the micro USB port with a 2 amp charger and cable which both came included in the box. The good thing about having a USB charger is that in case it's not available a different charger and cable can be used from another device. The speaker will charge from a lower amp charger as well it will probably take a little longer though. In case the device that you use would not have Bluetooth connectivity on it, you can always use the auxiliary input with a 3.5 mm mini jack and cable, but that does not come included in the box. There's a rubber piece that's included in the box that plugs in the micro USB port as well as the auxiliary input waterproofing this side of the speaker completely as well. The material that covers a large portion of the speaker is a plasma coated acoustic skin that makes the UEB water and stain resistant. Now this is a great feature if you plan to use the speakers outdoors a lot. You would not have to worry about water or dirt getting inside your speaker and damaging the internal components. The UE Boom uses two 1.5 inch drivers and two 2 inch passive reflectors, one on each side that are placed 180 degrees facing away from each other. It's the same concept that Bose uses, it's just laid out differently. Therefore the best way to listen to the speaker is having it upright. As you can see if I place the speaker on its side on the table, and it's not my table that's uneven, it's just the speaker trying to roll into the best position to expose all the drivers and reflectors to give you the best sound. So if I place it flat like this, the side that faces you will have the sound coming at you, but the sound in the back will pretty much will escape unless you have a wall behind to reflect the sound back towards the listener. So I still believe the best way to listen to the speaker is in the upright position. The U-Boom also comes with this handy app that you can download for free for your iOS or Android devices, as long as you have the Bluetooth connection established with your UE Boom, the app will recognize which speaker is connected to it and will display it on the front page. From here you can go into the settings where you can see different information about the speaker like the battery level firmware, you can rename your device. Also you can change the equalizer setting depending on the use of the speaker. Another feature that the app allows you to do from the main page is doubling up if you happen to have two UE Booms. This allows two UE Booms to be used as either two individual speakers that play both left and right channels or you can use them as a dedicated left and right speaker. Logitech claims that the UE Boom can be used for 15 hours straight on a single charge, and I highly doubt that they meant that this can be done at the highest volume setting, as I believe that if you plan to listen to it out loud, it will probably last you no longer than 3 to 4 hours, which is still not bad. The UE Boom will also remember up to 8 devices connected to it with the Bluetooth, and will try to reconnect to the last device used once it's powered on. Logitech also claims a 50 foot range for Bluetooth connectivity. Another very cool feature is that the UE Boom has a microphone built into it, so it can be used as a speakerphone. Now with the Bose Soundlink Mini, the first thing that you're going to notice is that it's not made out of plastic. Instead, Bose used this brushed aluminum finish, which makes it look very elegant and much classier looking than the UE Boom. Bose uses two active drivers and two passive reflectors. It's the same concept as the UE Boom, it's just laid out a little bit differently, everything facing forward pretty much. Now, the Bose also does not come with downloadable app, so you're going to have to control everything from the top, from these buttons here. Now, the only way to tell how much battery life is left in the speaker is by turning it on, and as you can see, the battery gauge indicator turns up green, which means that 
there is approximately 70 to 100 percent battery life left in the unit. Once it turns orange, you will know that there's approximately 20 to 70 percent, which you would have to guess. And if it turns red, then you know that there's less than 20 percent left. Now the Bose is not water or dustproof in any ways. As you can see, its open grill construction will allow the water to go in there very easily and damage the internal components. So this was really not intended for that type of use. If you want to use the speaker outdoors a lot, then I would say probably the UE Boom would be a better choice for you. As far as charging goes, you can have to use the power supply that was provided to you by Bose included in the box. Unlike the UE Boom where you can just borrow somebody else's USB power supply and the micro USB cable, you're going to have to use the one that was given to you. So in case you break it or you lose it, you're pretty much going to have to purchase from, from Bose Direct. The Soundly Mini also has an auxiliary input on the side of the unit, which is a 3.5mm mini jack, in case you would have a device that would not have Bluetooth connectivity to connect to the speaker. On the Bose, the battery is user replaceable, and all you gotta do to access it is to peel this rubber flap back, which is actually the stand, and that reveals the battery right under it. Now the battery is rated at 7.4 volts, 2330 milliamp, 17 watt hour. Bose claims that the battery can be charged in 3 hours, and can be used up to 7 hours on a full charge. The Soundly Mini can remember up to 7 devices connected to it with the Bluetooth and will try to reconnect to the last one used once it's powered on. Now Bose also claims that it has a 30 foot range for any Bluetooth connectivity. Now for the weight test we're going to use the scale and as you can see the UE Boom comes in at 539 grams which in pounds it's 1 pound and 3 ounces and the Bose is 1 pound 7.3 ounces which is 600 and 61 grams, so the Bose is a little bit heavier. Now this is the test we're going to do. I have the test tone generator set at 60 Hertz, so we're going to pump 60 Hertz into both of the speakers and we'll see how it moves the screen on the iPad and uh, let's see which one handles it better. And first, I'm going to use the Bose. And now we're going to switch over to the UE Boom. As you can hear and see on screen, the movement is not that good. It really doesn't move that much air. Now in this next test, I set up the camera approximately the same distance away from the speakers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play different types of music through them. And while it's playing, I'm going to point to the speakers like this so you will know which speaker is playing at the moment. So let's see what they can handle. As you heard, both of these speakers perform really well under different circumstances. They both have their strengths and their weaknesses. Like for instance, the Bose performs really well with the low frequencies but lacks the high ones. And at the same time, the UE Boom performs with the high ones with such an ease that the vocals came through crystal clear, but the bass is non-existent. So what we should do is take both of these speakers and just put it into each other. One company should be smart enough to take all the positive aspects and features from both units and just combine it into one to create the ultimate speaker.